Hi everybody. In today's video, I am going to show you my process for creating a NuGet package from a Blazor website. And I'm going to show you a preview of this site I'm building called Blazor Gallery, which is our project we're going to be using for uh, this for this demo. And I also wrote another app called Build Copy which is just an app I use. It's kind of a custom CICD if you want to be all fancy. Use words that look good on your resume, but basically it's going to copy the code. And I'll show you this here in a second, but whenever you build a NuGet package for Blazor, you have to copy the code into a templates folder and then use a template pack project, which comes with this Blazor gallery project if you want to clone it. The latest code is on GitHub. And then we're going to we're going to create our first build copy project which build copy has its own SQL server database we have to install. We'll do that. And then once you create your first Blazor gallery project, we'll just hit copy and then we're going to actually create the code. I mean, create the NuGet package and I'll show you how to create a local NuGet package so we can test it out and use .net new and you can create a Blazor image gallery in just a few seconds if this works. But it's already I've already done a test. It does work, but I haven't tested it since I got a little further along because now it's a multi-project template. But we'll see. So what we're going to do, and I am going to break the data tier and rebuild it just to show you datatier.net because it's too cool to have only 21 stars. I really think it deserves more. And maybe you'll tell me if it's better than Entity Framework by the end of this video. Better might not be a better word, but easier is what I'm looking for. Okay, so that's the end of PowerPoint. It was a one point slide. Uh, let me minimize that. Okay, and I'll go ahead and show you a demo of Blazor Gallery while it works because we haven't broke it yet. Okay, this is the folder. So the idea is you're going to be able to like you select, you click on it and you select a folder. Now I haven't got the, uh, the upload does work. Like you can select a file and it uploads. That, that reset button has some work to do. But, uh, but the file does get uploaded, but the gallery part isn't working because I haven't done the save yet. Because I wanted to record this while I built it because like a tree falls in the woods. If no one sees it, it doesn't exist. Okay, so, and also what I just recently added was this little remove this folder. The code doesn't work yet because we're gonna do that code here in just a second. But first, I wanted to show you how, this is uh, one of the purposes of this video. Let me go to NuGet and show you this. Blazor data juggler .blazor .components reached 50,000 installs this week so I wanted to make a video for it and I'll show you one of the components uh, that it comes with and it's this component let me minimize every golly I've got too many things open okay so back to what I was trying to do there we go so let's say you want to add a new folder and I'll just call it uh, oh we'll call it a dog pictures or something and you hit enter so you get your uh, or let's say you try to add one and then you start typing and you say oh wait a minute I don't want to do that you hit escape and it just goes away and that's built into the control and I'll show you how to wire that up but so now uh, before we break this though I'm going to show you datatier.net takes about three minutes for us to install datatier.net if you've already uh, seen this you can skip ahead about three minutes but I'm going to go ahead and Break my data tier, install data tier.net, and just to show you how easy it is to recreate all this. So, okay, so let me first, we're going to break some things. So, this is going to make everything stop compiling. So, we'll get everything checked in uh, just in case. <laughs> Never hurts to have a backup. Um, about to break everything so back it up okay and I'll show you a couple other cool things that I've learned with blazer recently because this is a uh, sorry to kind of skip around here but the one thing that I did learn how to do is how to have pages talk to each other because I didn't know how to do that until recently and this morning I started playing around and instead of making main layout just like host the navbar 
And usually main layout, if you've been looking at a blazer project, you'll have a body tag right here. It's just like at body. Well, I learned I turned the uh, index page into a component. And datajuggler.blazer.components comes with an interface. So if you, I'll show you the code briefly in the index page, which the index page actually doesn't do anything yet, but we're going to display the images on the index page. But let me go into the code pages. Okay, see this iBlazer component and iBlazer component parent. By implementing this, it's just a way for child components to talk to each other with the parent. And I've done this with components a bunch, but this was the first time I learned how to do it with a page. And this works the same as soon as I switched it to this. And by this parent equals this, there's one thing you have to do. And this I'll show you. Um, Microsoft and me have a disagreement on this property. That's, you have to add this right here, BL0007, because otherwise they'll, they'll tell you to use auto property. They don't like you putting code in the setters, but I have code uh, in the setter of this uh, index page that says parent equals this. And I'll show you that real quick. Sorry to kind of skip around, but this is all important stuff for iBlazer components. So let me go to where we have parent. And this is in the setter where if the parent's not null, I register with the parent. And then over here in main layout, I can, uh, I keep a reference to the index page. Where is it? pages.index there we go because there's also a system.index so that's why I did it this way but so you have your uh, index page and once in the register method here I just say if the component registering is an index page I store it so now the main layout can talk to the index page and the index page can talk to the uh, main layout so that way and if there was another page you could send messages in between you know using the uh, main layout as a uh, kind of man in the middle all right so all that is just some info I wanted to share with you in case you're still here so now what we're going to do is break our data tier so I'll just so you're running one more time okay and that still works and that actually that actually sets the data in the selected folder in SQL Server but so we're gonna break our data tier so everything's gonna stop compiling I'm gonna open the folder in File Explorer actually this right here. okay and we're going to break our data tier so goodbye data tier but luckily you're easily to recreate okay so that's going to cause this app to completely quit working so we'll just make that remove all right and now what we're going to do is I need to do a couple of things to reinstall data tier.net so I'm gonna take out the data tier.net connection string and hit OK and also I'm going to take out the blazer gallery connection string and we'll put this back in just a second as we rebuild everything okay so now this is at the part where we're going to install data tier.net so go to github data tier.net has 21 stars looking for 25 alright and now go down to the releases tab there is a release.msi Right here, I'm going to save this to my temp folder. I already have it, but I'll just replace over it. And now we're going to open this as soon as it finishes downloading. And we'll launch. I'll go ahead and close this. I'll put the link to datatier.net and all the other uh, projects mentioned in this video. Okay, so we're going to install datatier.net. And now we're going to launch it. Okay, this is what it looks like when you first launch. It's going to tell you to create a database in SQL Server Management Studio named datatier.net.database. So let's do that now. Okay, I already have one. I knew it. 
we're gonna let me close this doesn't matter okay, delete yeah this is okay so we're gonna delete our blazer gallery and that goes all my folders but that's okay I've got all the SQL and we'll rebuild that too so now we're gonna start over install datatier.net dot database okay and I want you to tell me if this seems easier than entity framework that's what I want to hear alright so now we're gonna go over here and check this box and it says click here so we're gonna click here and now you're ready to uh, set up the connection string in your environment variable so for that type in my server name and Windows authentication leave all this build test install this will close in about three seconds so it's gonna force us to reopen it now you'll get these two shortcuts on your desktop when you install datatear.net so we'll go ahead and launch datatear.net if you get to here you have datatear.net installed on your computer and you're ready to create your own projects which we're gonna do now so now we're going to go back to Blazor Gallery, which I will show you the link here on GitHub. If you just go to Repositories, it should be among the first ones because it's the most recently worked on. So here is Blazor Gallery. You can either copy here and go to Visual Studio and clone it, or you can just download the code as a zip file. I'm going to assume you already have it at this point, so because I've already got it. So what we're going to do now is go to SQL Server Management Studio close that don't need it alright and in SQL Server Management Studio sorry if I can get to the right place we are going to create a new database I'm going to close this too called Blazor Gallery hit OK alright and now in the clone that you just cloned a few minutes ago here there is a folder that I'm gonna a file I'm gonna open so go open file and go to blazor gallery database dot sql and execute and that will create uh, all the uh, tables and the store procedures that we're gonna build anyway here in just a second but I just wanted to show you that is what we got us back now there's one more thing we need to do and eventually when you create a user there's going to be a home folder created for that user but until then I've got this insert home folder little store proc okay so now we have one folder and then there's one more thing you need to do we need to set up the environment variable for our connection string and when you install datatier.net you get this free app that's probably worth the price right there and we're going to type in my server name again there is a way to have it auto load this but I don't have it set so it doesn't show up in the doesn't install that way but now I use environment variables and I can do that but haven't done it yet all right and this is going to be blazor gallery Windows authentication test and copy alright now we're gonna click over here edit the system environment variables click on add here's the one for datatear.net we just added we're gonna add another one for blazor gallery and I'm gonna paste in the connection string on my clipboard but before we leave here I'm going to copy the uh, connection environment variable name and hit OK and now we're gonna go over to our project and we're gonna create our first datatier.net uh, datatier but let me open, I'm gonna save that variable on my clipboard right there that blazer gallery connection strings we're gonna need that here in just a second okay so now we're ready to create our first um, datatier.net project so project name blazer gallery project folder that is going to be we're going to open up blazer gallery there's a data folder copy full path 
That's where Microsoft wants to put the weather forecast every time, but we're using it for something actually useful. Okay, and this will create the data tier in your project folder, and we're going to click on Enable Blazor Features. And what that does is uh, it enables a couple things, but one of them is we're going to create a uh, service that can uh, that we're going to use to load our data tier. It just makes it really simple. And for now, I'll just put allow binding, but that's uh, okay. And next, we're going to add our database server name again. You click on the little ellipses here that'll refresh your list of databases and I'm going to select Blazor Gallery and hit save and hit save again. Had this been a big project and you had any tables or fields you want to exclude you can uncheck them here before you build but we're going to go ahead and build all three tables. Alright and now this is asking me to include the code generated files in our data tier. And this is opening to the right place for me because this is not the first take of this video, but if it wasn't, you'd have to browse to the right folder. And I'm just going to click on Update Projects. And this should only take a second with three tables. Okay, and then finally you have to execute these store procedures that were code generated. Okay, so now we have our entire data tier built. So, Theoretically, if we uh, add our references to this project, everything is going to work just like it was before. I love living in a duplex, let me tell you. Okay, add uh, dependencies. Project reference. Oh, okay. There's no projects found, and I'll show you why. First thing we're going to do is we're going to say, I'm going to include this data folder in the project because that's probably the way it's going to be for you. So you're going to say exclude from project, which I realized I just did the opposite. And now we're going to create a solution folder. Add new solution folder, call it data. And now we're going to add our four projects that make up our data tier. All right, now I'm in the right folder again, but that probably won't be the case for you, so you'll just have to do some browsing. And I wish there was a way to do all this at once, and it is on my to-do list to get this down to less projects, but it's not happening today. And finally, the object library. Okay, so now we'll just show you what everything that we just did compiles. Okay, it does not, and the reason is I need to add those project references that I was just trying to add. Dependencies, add project reference. Add everyone except for the DAC. Add the first three. Okay, and now let's make sure we compile. Okay, we have to go create our folder service. That was something since we're recreating our project. So let's do that. Go to datachair.net open our project, click on manage data, click on folder. I'm going to first go ahead and click on create callback and that saves uh, on its own. You don't have to do anything there. And now I'm going to click on Blazor Data Services. And this folder here represents this uh, gateway.services. So there's nothing here yet. So we're going to add this right here. First we're going to say install, and then now we're going to create the data services for folder. And that creates two classes. We'll go over here, and now I'll just show you what we just, uh, here's the two classes. So now I can delete this temporary service. But you'll see some temporary classes that are only here so the project compiles via NuGet before you build. Okay. And the only other thing I'm going to show you here is in the business objects folder. This is where you get two partial classes. You get two classes, two files for each uh, table. And we can delete this temporary again. Okay. And now the data class is going to get overwritten every time you build with datatear.net. But if you have any custom methods or properties or anything, put them in the business class. And it only gets uh, recreated if it doesn't exist. Okay, so now the last thing we need to do is in the connection folder 
set our environment variable name. See where it says change to your system? It actually says system environment, but now it's not system environment. It's actually a user level. I need to change that in the templates. I'll uh, do that soon. But And in my notepad that I just copied, Blazor Gallery Connection Stream, there. So now I'll show you this, where this is used. Let's first see if we compile after all this. Okay, folder does not contain a callback, so let's go do that. Oh, it does create a callback. I need to build again. Okay, now we'll try that again. Okay, so now we're building. I'm going to go ahead and close down uh, build copy for a second because we don't need it. But now I just want to show you the app should be back to working. <sighs> That's a bug. Okay, so here's our only, because uh, I recreated everything, the home one is the only folder here. But if I go ahead and add a new folder, I'm going to just call this vacation, hit enter. Okay, so everything's back to working. Now we're going to go ahead and do the delete, uh, the remove folder code. We're going to write that. I'll show you how easy it is to save uh, the remove. Do the, do the save code really quickly, just so while I'm working on this. So let's go to uh, main layout. And I've got, I've already set this up. I've got this delete folder method and it passes in the folder ID but I don't have the code doing this yet. So first thing I want to do is find this folder and make sure it's not selected. So we're going to say folder uh, equals folder service dot find folder. And I need to make this async so that I can make this awaitable. And we're going to say find folder Okay, and now I'm going to just check that the folder exists. It's the same as folder not equal to null, but you can do more than one object. I hit control shift there to do that comment as part of regionizer, and that's another story. If you want a video about that, let me know. All right, and now we're going to just say if folder.selected. I don't know how that got. Okay. That was an auto comment there too, with control shift. Now what we want to do, uh, unselect all folders. And I wrote a method to do this, and I'm just going to pass in the selected folder ID. Unselect all others, and this will perform the save. And I'll show you this really quickly. But all I do is do a loop through all the folders, and if this is not the selected folder ID, I put selected to false. I could have done this at like the logged in user dot selected folder or someplace where it's only one, but for this, I wanted to be able to hear in the layout just say uh, if folder dot selected, I show a different color button, and you can't select the the folder that's already selected too. So I changed the color. This is all I'm doing for now. But anyway, so now we're gonna finish our delete code. I just wanted to get to the point of uh, before we do the okay. Uh, find all references, get back to where I was. One of these. Okay, let me go back to our delete one of these places. Okay, of course it's the last one I'm looking at. There. Okay, so we're in the delete folder method. And now what I'm going to do is say uh, folder service dot delete remove folder and we're going to just pass in uh, folder uh, bowl removed equals await okay perform the delete and I'll show you this briefly how this works. This uses the gateway class, and here's where it sets in that environment variable name I was we set earlier. 
and it just calls gate. You can either use the gateway or you can use the service, whichever you find is easier. I like using the service because I don't have to create an instance of the gateway, but you can do, you know, whichever you find easier. All right, so we don't need this anymore. Okay, so now I want to say if deleted, force uh, refresh. I can spell refresh. What the crap? Oh, I'm in the wrong place. I'm in the, uh, I didn't mean to put code here. All right. All right, wasn't even trying to change that. So we'll close that. Here is where I meant to say, if removed, refresh. update the UI and I think I might oops, need this Re, uh, if removed I could have done that with control shift too all right now force reload is a property I added and in the on after render async method I just uh, reload the service if it's the first render or if first reload is true just so I had a way to force this so let's see if our delete code works hate that that it doesn't open with the right one okay I'm gonna add one more <coughs> excuse me okay then we'll just call this dog pictures and I'll show you how this component works here in a second too before we go because we're almost done but we're gonna make the nougat package so we're gonna remove vacation so that dog pictures uh, I mean we're gonna re yeah we want dog pictures to stay selected okay and that worked so that was uh, good that that works so that is our how you do a uh, the save and delete and load all you I'll show you the load really quick I showed you that's right here it's a folders equals just folders just get folder list so that's a uh, pretty simple to me all right so now we're ready to make a nuget package of what we got so far so here's the process for building a nuget package so I'm gonna temporarily uh, I'm gonna just shut down this project for a second and I'm going to take this project build. Uh, this is datajuggler.blazer components. I was going to show you this really quickly, but here's the way that uh, where I had the validation component, where if you hit escape or you hit enter, I've got two uh, methods that I say where it says send message to parent and then the validation component. And of course, I just closed the project, so I'm trying to show you this but I saw this and realized I told you I was going to show you this part so let's go back to uh, and what I usually do for all these is I usually remove all the data tier from the list because I don't need them so back in here go to main layout ah yeah in main layout uh, Okay, yeah, and the, here's the, uh, I handle the, if escape pressed, I set add folder mode equals false, and it refreshes the page, and that text box goes away. Or if the inner uh, button is pressed, the new one is created, I call the unselect folders method, set that to false so it hides the text box, and set force reload. So that's how you uh, do the... Uh, that's how the validate and I'll show you on the blazer page all it is is you just set a validation component you can set some properties you know and you can set some CSS around it but that is okay so that's first part of this demo so now we're on to the second phase which is how we build the nuget package so sorry it's kind of complicated to show all this but I hadn't made a video for it so we're gonna go ahead and close this and I'll check that in later once we get some more done. All right, so what I wanna do now, I'm gonna even shut down blazer.components. I just wanted to show you that, how that enter key works. I thought that works pretty well, being able to do just an edit. The grid works the same way. You can have the grid do edit in place like that. So that's why I like it. All right, we're gonna close this down. All right, now here is the project build copy. 
we're going to go back to repositories build copy okay if you clone build copy this is going to you need to open up a visual studio 2022 and make sure you have windows desktop feature enabled because we're going to build a WinForms uh, project and once you you can either clone it there or you can uh, download the zip file but there's a SQL folder that we're going to use because we're going to create a database called build copy uh, yes to all is fine okay let me close all this stuff okay now I've already got a database here called build copy but I'm going to delete it and uh, recreate it so just so you can follow along it's not liking me doing that I don't know why huh I must have ran this recently uh, I don't see anything hitting it okay I'm going to reopen SQL Server Management Studio. That seemed weird. Um, I don't think I have anything running. Sorry, just checking really quickly. Make sure build copy didn't stay like running. Alright. Okay, something was weird there. Okay, so now. We're going to create a new database called build copy. And I know we just deleted it, but that's okay. And now we're going to open a file. And this file is in GitHub build copy SQL build copy database.sql. Hope it works. Okay. So now we have that. Now we need to set up a connection string to build copy. So we're going to use the connection string builder again. That's one reason I install it every video just to make sure you have this. But so I'm going to set my uh, server name again. This is going to be build copy Windows authentication test and copy. Okay. So now we're going to go to edit system environment variables or edit environment variables I've already got one here for build copy but I will delete it and just uh, recreate it to show you so we're gonna call this build copy connection string and I'm gonna paste that in so now hit OK and OK and OK and you have uh, build copy ready to run on your machine if you did everything right so now, or if I explained everything right, probably is more likely. Let me remove that. Okay, so now we're going to run build copy, and I'll show you how this works. And then we're going to clone the NuGet package, and we're almost done. So just wanted to show you how all this works. Okay, I've got it currently set for release. I was going to build a release of this, but I realized there's really not much point because you need Visual Studio or you kind of can't really use most of this stuff so okay so now we'll just start debugging now I don't have any projects so we're going to create a project the project name is blazer gallery the path and I'll show you where the path is that is going to be blazer gallery so that's the uh, project that I've been showing you this whole video and then now the output folder that is going to be open up project templates working templates okay now there's already some code in here because this is uh, I've ran this before but that's okay just hit select folder and now we need to add some exclude folders because there's some folders that we don't want copied quite a few and I wish there was a way I may see if there's a way I can uh, automate this like a Visual Studio button or something but it's not won't take that long so the first one is I don't want to copy this uh, add another one I wish I could have that like oh, I could do it I just haven't done it but have this when you click add just pop up the little box and then now we want I don't want the Visual Studio and then uh, 
where are we? Okay, and I don't want Ben. I don't want uh, object. Okay, and uh, project templates. Yeah, we don't want that. I don't think there's anything else. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and click Save, and that'll have our Blazor Gallery project. That font needs to be bigger so I can read it there, but that's another story. Now you're ready just to click Copy, and this will take a long time. Okay, okay, done. So what that did was copy all the code from our Blazor project into this template project. So let's go to... Uh, we're going to open up another project and this project is called template pack and it is let me go to blazer gallery if you go to project templates working templates oh, here it is in the working folder there's a template pack solution now there's a couple of things you have to do to a blazer project to make it packable, or at least, yeah, that's couple's probably right. Back in our Blazor Gallery project, we don't need build copy anymore. I just wanted to show you that. I think that's it's useful for this. So back in Blazor Gallery again, this is the, the NuGet the project uh, we're turning into a NuGet package. You have to click on first. Go to Properties. And like any package, you can say produce a package file during build, but this will not work unless you go edit project file and is packable true. I, I've got an error and it tells you or something or I found a blog or something that tells you this, but once you put is packable and then the other thing uh, you can do here or the other thing, this uh, little template pack project is good for oh not this uh, this is the template pack but we're gonna go ahead and go up a version on our uh, oops right there is where I was trying to go up all right so and I should have done that before we copied so that's gonna not work if I don't do that doesn't really matter but I just wanna I guess it still will but all right okay so now I'm going to run our little build copy one more time just to uh, get that little one file recopied. But uh oh, not template pack. Uh, I opened the wrong project. Got template pack twice. I was supposed to be opening build copy. There we go. I've got a shortcut on my desktop for this too now. Uh, there, and I can just click copy. Uh oh. It's trying to, it's still not, I thought I had this fixed. Huh. Well, that's good. It worked the first time, and then the second time it decides not to work. That's weird. All right. But get access to the path. I know why, because we have this. Blazor Gallery is currently, or the template pack. All right. Let's try that again. Something had access to it like it's uh let me close that too. Son of a bitch. Access to the path. All right, so I'll try reopening. Uh, I'll just run it. I'll see if this works. I don't know if it will, but this is the install I just made. So sorry, this isn't going well. Oops. 
Hang on, why would that not? So the install version doesn't go to the database. So that's good to know. I'm glad I didn't put that on GitHub. All right, uh, try this again. I don't get it. Access to the path 99999. What the crap? Where do I have a, process, a path called that? dot get it's not supposed to oh I didn't I didn't exclude dot get okay so it's user error most uh, errors are go to blazer gallery get okay save all right I'm sorry, I'm an idiot there. Okay, so it works. Just don't try to copy the uh, git because it's uh, it doesn't like that, which I didn't want to copy it anyway. So, all right. So now, done with build copy. One more time. All right. So we're ready to build a nuget package. Forty minutes into this, but that was the point of the video. So what we're gonna do now is open the template pack project again. And this again is part of the uh, Blazor Gallery project if you clone it. Go to Edit Project File. You have to do this to set the version, which is weird. But Package Version, I'm going to set to 1.0.5. And I'm going to save this. And with Template Pack, I'll show you the settings. If you open this up, this is how you set the settings. So if you want to do your own project and set in your own values, just go to this templates.config. And there's a few other things. You can look at this project if you want to change some things, but basically uh, have it, here's your name of the package and all that. So what we're going to do is build. Okay, now what I don't know from what we just did is if the uh, data the, the stuff in the data folder is going to get uh, copied because um, it's here so let's go see so what we're going to do now let me open up the bin folder here open folder in file explorer release here's the package we just made I'm going to copy this to my local NuGet and I'll briefly explain uh, how to do a local NuGet in case you've never done it. Uh, go to, I've got a little shortcut somewhere here. I just have a C local NuGet and I'm going to delete the old one. And now if you open up Visual Studio um, and you can say, I'll even do this, I'll close this down because we don't need template pack. So I'm going to open up Visual Studio and if you say continue without code and now you say tools, NuGet package manager, package manager console, actually there's a settings, uh, sorry I went to the wrong place, but we're, we need this open but I wanted to do this, package manager settings and you can say package sources and click on this little plus sign and you can uh, change it instead of HTTPS you can make this source like a folder which is what I did but I don't need this one so we'll just cancel because I've already got it but now here in the package manager console I'm gonna use local NuGet and what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna change directories to my temp folder and I'm gonna empty my temp folder it always makes me feel like a rebel alright temp folder empty okay alright and now we're gonna say change directory cd c colon backslash temp so now we're in the temp folder and to install this this is now version 1.0.5 we're gonna say dot net new install this 
Okay, and now we're going to create a new project, and that is .NET new data juggler .blazor gallery. Okay, so now if we go to my temp folder, and now we have this project, the data folder is here. I'm going to check if all the references came through. If we did, we're good to go. Hopefully they do. We don't have to do any nougating. Uh, so now we're going to open up this solution. Now notice our environment variable is already set and the uh, uh, database is already installed. So with any luck, all we have to do is run this and this will work. Now, there's one thing we got to do, and I'll show you what that is. And I don't know how to do this uh, through code. When you create a new Blazor project, it wants to use HTTPS. I don't want to do that. I want to, I'm going to go ahead and close this so it opens right. Okay, but that was a success. You can now create a Blazor NuGet packages. So once I get this project a little further along, and just to show you all this still works, so now I'm going to add back my vacation folder. Okay, so that is how to create a Blazor uh, NuGet package. What do you think? Do you want me to finish the rest of this project and show you some more, or let me know? All right, thanks for watching.